Hi guys, Christine here. Today we're gonna to do a quick walkthrough of this new kit that I've just put up and do an assembly instruction so you can see how easily it goes together. So let's just take a look at it. It's a journal insert fold out meant to go inside your journal, but if you don't wanna put it inside your journal, you can simply attach another sheet of your choosing. Um, just glue it to the back and it's a finished piece that can stand on its own. But if you do want to put it in your journal, I would suggest finding a good open space. It's a little bit thick. You know, it's not the thickest thing I've ever made, but it's a little thick. So you want to find like here, like a signature division. I usually build in a little extra space in my journals just for this reason. So, well, in this case, this is here. Well, this can be moved. That's the beauty of this. Um, and I could stick this right here and just glue it down and then it would open as it needs to or as it wants to, as we want it to when we open it up. So just, just an FYI. So now let's have a look. All right, so if we open it up, you'll see a couple of photos here and there. Now this print and this print are both optional. If you want something more classic, um, there are included um, another another pattern um, that, that actually matches the front. The front. Um, but I like the concept of time and the passage of time. And for this one, I like the time and the idea of life's little moments like lost and found and florists, rent, renting a room, you know, all those little life things that, that come and go. So opening this up, let's get this in, in view here. As I mentioned, these are just printed photos that come with the kit. I'm not sure it's these photos that come with the kit, but these two definitely do. And um, these are just some, I have a whole kit of photos, so um, you can get uh, lots of photos on my site, but that's not the point. You can use your own photos. These, these are a little bit special. There's a little space for journaling on the little envelopes for them. And if you look at them, like this one, for example, let's get her in focus. Is she going to come up? There she goes. I don't know if you can see just how shimmery she actually is um, because she is actually on tin. And I show you in another video how to do that. And I'm super excited about that because it is so easy and fun. I also show you how to make mock slide negatives or um, glass negatives from the olden times. Um, and this is a glass positive. You can see here, absolutely see through. And this is a glass negative. So this would have been used for maybe a projection like in a lantern. Um, projector and this might be used to make actual photographs so let's let's put these guys back there we go okay and then here are the actual photo pages and you can see this is photos and then there's room for a, you could journal entry there um, but there's an index and here too is another shimmery I don't know if it's showing up on camera that it shimmers, um, but another tin type. And here's just another printout. Another printout. You don't also, you don't have to cut out these little windows that come in all the pages. And you can see all the pages are different and you can mix and match. You could have just photos or just journaling, um, whatever you choose. I chose a combination of, of a few of them. Um, but you don't have to cut out these little windows if you don't want to. You could just glue your images um, in this space and I put these little ornaments here just to make it charming. So here's one where it is just glued down and here's another tin type um, that was actually put in the window and I show you how to do that in the video. So there it is. Lots of room. You could put something there. Um, I'd be careful about how much you put in even I Believe me, I understand that this is screaming for a pocket, but I think at some point it's going to be a little too thick. So I leave that to your discretion. All of this was printed, if I didn't say it before or in the future, on 110 index, Nina 100 pound index um, that I use all the time. I think I've linked to it you know, a number of times for everything except the these envelopes, that's plain copy paper. And this happens to be 32 pound premium HP, but it could be copy paper. So it really is almost all um, cardstock. And again, the, the Nina 100 or 110, I forget which it is, um, is slightly lighter than 65 pound. 
So you could definitely make um, the piece out of 65 pound. These, I think having it a little bit lighter is helpful because they're doubled over. So you know, you print it out and then you fold them. So anyway, that's all your call. That These are my recommendations. So with all of that out of the way, let's get to work. All right, so let's have a look at how easily this gets made. Um, what I've done is I have cut um, the square things um, that we'll be using. I just cut them out. They were square. I'll cut this one out. But I thought I would show you how, um, how I would recommend cutting this one and these. And then I'll go off camera and finish doing it myself. So basically, all you need to know is obviously these are all straight, straight lines except for this one. And this one is a perfect match to a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes, which off also happens to be my glue can. So I'm just gonna come around here, I hope you can see this, and trace the edge of the can for the arc. And the rest, ta-da, perfect, beautiful, lovely. I could never do that with scissors. I know there are people who can, I am not one of them. So now we simply trim. Now the black line was meant to be included in this case, um, a little bit for definition and a little bit just because that's how I saw it in my head. So you can cut it off, but if you do that, then your cover flap is going to be a little short. Ah, come on, it was stuck. Here and here, cut off right to the arc. A little tight there. There we go. And lovely. And this we could just leave. It's going to get glued to the back, so it's better to have a little extra. And then for these guys, same thing. This can, 28 ounce diced or crushed or smashed tomatoes will, I don't know if you can see this. Oh, you, of course, you can see it best this way and I can see at least best that way. But let me see if I can keep my fat head out of it so you can see it. See how it lines up? So line it right up to the, line it right up. To the, line it up, or I guess line it right up, um, to the brown line and follow it. There we go. And the rest obviously are just square and it's easier to go this way so you can see where the cutout begins and ends. I'll turn each one. And again, you wanna do scissors or you know, drill or <laughs> it doesn't matter. You do what makes you happy. Um, for me, this is perfect. So let's see. So I wasn't quite firm enough in my cutting this way and that way. But now, just clean it up a little bit. There you go. So now we have a lovely, perfect little arc. And that's how I would do all of these. Going further with this page, when you go to cut this page, no matter how I tried to do it, I couldn't get all the crop marks to appear on this page. It just, it won't for some reason, um, which is a little odd, but, so what you want to know is this. You wanna cut, first of all, you want to score. You need three scores. Let's do that now. And again, I just use the back of my knife when it's something like this. This is a 110 pound index or a 100 pound index. Um, which is a little bit lighter than 65 pound cover and is what I use mostly for these sorts of journal insert designs. So I'm just using the back of my knife to give the paper an idea of where we're going to want it to go. Okay, so once I've done that, I want to look, or you want to look, but so do I, I want to look for the, the crop marks I do see, which are these guys. And they do line up with the edge of the cutout. Now there's no bleed here. Um, it, it, when I 
tried to do a bleed it meant making everything smaller and that wasn't worthwhile this is pretty easy cutting it doesn't need the excess like in a couple of my other kits so we are just simply going to cut on these lines so i went from here to here so this is cut now we're going to cut the long sides both of them leave this for last sometimes it's just the better way to do it so since we've already scored this we know where it's going to fold we know where the middle is so you can see this is the extra part and you can see some of the the print is not showing it may show on your printer I hope it does it makes life a lot simpler um, but on my printer right now it is not showing so I'm going to just trim to the edge that I that I know I want which was the first one we cut there we go so now you can see it doesn't it doesn't fill but that's not a big deal I'm not gonna worry about that and then you might as well do your little folds and furnace everything so there you go so that's how I'm going to do all of these I'm going to do the three scores I'll cut out some of the arcs you don't have to cut out all the arcs and I'll show you why later so you should watch the video first before you attempt um, assembling your kit to see all the ways that you can change it as you go so I'm gonna go do this off camera I'm going to ink off camera because you know how that is and I'll be back okay so I have all of my pages cut and inked um, where I'm going to and now we're ready to assemble so the first things we want to do are to insert the photos that are going to be inserted and to do that we want to kind of know the order that they're going in so I know I want this to be the front and then I want this one and then I think I want uh this one and then we could have that one or that one i think we'll take this one so let's see that's the top that's the top okay and then it really doesn't matter then it's just kind of winging it okay let's pretend this is what we want so what you want to do though is it is pretty important that you have the order right for the way you want your pages to fall so this is going to be the bottom page or the last page in my in my little album and it's going to end with a journaling section and this is the top and then this is going to go this way because you just want to make sure that the arcs are going in the right direction as they are here and this doesn't matter it's just for journaling or you know describing the photos this is the front page or the first photo page and this is the top okay so now keeping them sort of in order might help you so we don't have to do anything with this one now this one needs two inserted photos and put those over there because I'll work with just this so I'm going to begin with inserting this gorgeous little tin type photo this i did another video that i will post when i post all of this um, and there's a whole separate set of all daguerreotype images that you can use to do this method and i absolutely love it there's another one here somewhere this guy um, that you can just see the sheen and it's metallic and looks like tin so we'll get we'll get to that in the next video but for now we want to stick this lovely lady in here and i want some tape to do that okay i'm going to use kind of swanky artist tape to do it because it's what's sitting next to me and i don't need a lot i just need enough to keep her in place while i position her that's she's a little high there I don't want it. I want it to be well centered that should be good all right and so for this one which is the opposite page let me get this there we go for this one 
we are going to use uh, a printout a printed page. Um, I don't know which photos are going to come with this kit. These are all from the original daguerreotype kit I made. Um, and there'll be, there's a lot of pictures in there, and there'll be at least enough to fill an album in here, plus some extras. But who do I, oh, I like this guy. So the, in this kit, what I did is I did boost the contrast and the, the whites and the darks so that you get a real daguerreotype feel. Um, and I really love this little kid. So let me get another piece of tape. And we're gonna get him in position. And of course, you want to make sure he's going right side up, which is easy enough. Oh, what a sweetie. Okay, so there we go. And now we're going to glue this page closed without gluing these flaps. These flaps you should not put glue on. So let's get some glue, and I would go with the big girl glue because we don't want them coming apart. And we do want to get along the edges so that they stay closed, but not the flaps. We're going to glue those separately later. There we go. And then let's just get some on the actual photo so everything sticks. And why is this not coming out? There we go. This is not my favorite cap for these uh, glues. I wish they didn't change it, but apparently they have. Okay. All right, there's one. Okay, so that is my next page. And then this doesn't need, well, it needs to be glued closed. I could probably just glue it with glue stick, honestly. Um, in fact, no, I'll just use this. It's, it's still here. So I'm going to go light with the glue. Because it's not really holding anything except the two pieces of paper together. But we do want it seal the edges. Oh look, I did a great job sealing the edges. Still. Okay, so there's the next one. Now this one has a picture that wants a an insert. And where's my other? I have another tin type somewhere. Here we go, my gentleman. So I'm going to put him in here. This is how you get him in there. Make sure that he's centered nicely so that sharp edges don't stick out. But now on this one, I purposely did not cut it because we can take a, a photo and simply, if we don't want to go through the whole cutting and all of that, we could just glue it in. And what we want to do for that is, oh, my printer's running out of some color. But we're going to trim it so that it fits in between our little flourishes there. So let's see. Maybe we could trim it even a little bit more. I like this little burnt out part, so we're going to leave that and take this part. And we're going to... Oh, that's nice. Okay, so now I'm going to just glue her down. Basic glue stick. She doesn't need whoop de doo glue. And we're not going to give her whoop de doo glue. It is a simple paper to paper bond. She'll be quite happy in her new home. go. Voila. It's that simple. You don't even have to do any of this fancy gluing stuff. So now pick this up. But we will glue these together. 
Again, avoiding the flap area and just giving it a good, I don't know why it's not wanting to come out. Probably because it says, Christine, we're not coming out because you don't need as much as you ask for. Which is probably like the story of my life. Okay. Number three. All right, so now these, this one just needs a photo. So let's pick another photo. Oh, this girl's charming. And let's just trim her up. And I would probably do a, a little bit of inking on some of these edges if you all weren't watching. Nice, okay, so she's gonna come here. Let's, again, simple glue stick. Getting the edges as you can. And this ridiculous little cap to the glue. Let's put her in. And I'm going to go ahead and finish up putting all my photos in, but you get the main idea. You put the photo in and you glue the page. And I'll tell you again to avoid the flap because I would probably need to be told at least three times. Okay. All right, that's the next one. I think it goes this way, that way, I think. I don't know, we'll figure it out when I'm done. So I have two more, well, you know, I just have one more photo. And again, I'm just gonna glue something on. Ah, oh. youth or wisdom, which do I choose? Going with wisdom. Oh, who do I have in here before? Yeah, I've got youth. We've got youth covered. All right. So let's get the white out of here since I'm not inking. And let's trim so that our friend here fits within the little widgets. Oh, I love this. Okay. Blue stick. My Amazon order. I use a different piece of paper for my glue paper. This just helps me oh, get to the edges when I have, I can use paper underneath it. All right, come on, Grandma. Let's, let's sit right here. So I should just mention that all of this paper so far that you've seen, including the printed photos, is the 100 pound or 110, 100 pound, I think it is, Nina um, index stock, which is a little bit lighter than 65 pound stock and also takes a nice print. Okay, so that is done. Close up the glue. And now let's look again at our order. So this is going to be here and that's going to be there. And then the next woman is there and the little boy is there. And then we're going to have some journaling room. And then we're going to have some more pictures. And then there we go. And grandma. Okay. So I have put mine in order and I know that they're at this point all right side up <laughs> watch that change when I put this together but right now they're all right side up and now we start gluing to the back so this is my back and this kit's been arranged so that really anything can be the back anything could be the inside you could change this all up um, you know I'm going to have 
this sort of look because it's just my vibe um, you could have this sort of look or this sort of look um, you can choose you know which you use to to be which part so now I'm using this part and let me see here this is going on here so that's the front okay so now we just have to glue down and to glue down we want to generally put them in place and I know that the bottom should be about a quarter inch from the bottom and then I'm going to just flip I'm taking this whole stack and flipping it over and we are going to glue each of these flaps okay oh I should check some others, make sure I did glue them all down. Because you do want them closed before you assemble. It looks like they're all down. Okay, so now our lovely friend is up and we know we want her about there. Okay, so now we have to add glue to both these raw sections of paper. And we probably could trim that off because it's going to get covered. Because this will get put here and then the next one will get put there. So it won't even show. So it doesn't matter. We don't have to trim it off. Okay. So again, we want to kind of eyeball it for center. And we know that the, the bottom one, if you're using one, two, three, four, five, six total sheets, the bottom one should be around a quarter of an inch up. So now we're going to add some glue to both these sides. And this will create the hinge that will allow her to flip appropriately. So again, by putting her in the center, about there, make sure that flap is down. Oh, there goes my big head. And put her in. So now she should still be able to flap up and down. Okay, one. So now we take the next one and we're going to glue her right atop our first one so that this flap of paper does not impinge the hinge so that she can still also open. And she can. Let's get some glue on here. Oops, sorry about that noise. And again, you just don't want her to, you don't want it to be too far in the hinge area to make sure that grandma below her can still flip up. So we do want it a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, that actually looks a little high, but it should work fine. Now watch me run out of room. It's actually possible I'm going to, so let me pull her down a little bit. Okay. Next we have these people. And you just want to make sure before you glue that you're right side up and even. So here's adding the glue right up to the hinge. Let me kind of see where is that hinge. And try and keep them straight and aligned. Once they start going off course, they're going off course. But we're still good here. Okay. And then the next one and so forth. So I'll just probably speed this up. I don't think I'm going to say anything meaningful.
Okay, so now the last card, which is not glued shut because we didn't think we had to do anything to it, silly us. Let me quickly just get some glue in here. Good and happy. Okay, so now this is the last one and it's going to go right up here and you'll see that this is on the showing side now because all the others, they've been covered by the one above them so you don't notice any of the white parts. But this one will show, so we're going to cut that. And it's right on the top, so it's fine. And there we go. So we are going to, same glue with a slightly smaller flap on the upside, just so that it's not showing. And big head in the way. It sometimes helps to put the other one up to see, well, how far could we go? How close could we get? There we go, and then align them. And then I got some glue there, but now we do that. And now we have our beautiful waterfall. Brought to you by glue and paper. Okay, so there's the base. And you can see, you can do the index. All these beautiful people. And ta-da. Now we could put another piece back here, just, you know, another photo or another um, place for journaling, whatever you like. We're going to give this a second to dry. I'm going to stick it under some... Let's give it some love. Okay, okay. now we want to add the doors and, and flaps. So these are the two that I picked, <clears throat> excuse me, two that I picked for mine. Now remember I said I left this super flexible, so I didn't mark any crease marks where you should be cutting and, and folding, scoring and folding rather. So I'm going to say for this one it's five inches, because that will fit on the paper, and I'm going to score it a half inch. So that each of these, this one's slightly shorter I think, or narrower. Each of these um, will become doors as well. And that's so that we can keep in the sides from looking messy. So first I'm going to do, I think I'm going to have this one be the top one. Let me get the scorer. And the reason I didn't indicate score lines is because you might want to switch them. You might want, like I'm going to put this one on the right and this one on the left. So I'm going to score them here, each on each side. You might want to do it the other way. And have this be the the left the left hand side, so you would score the other side. So again, your choice. It's just a matter of what you want. So it's five inches. I'm going to do about a half inch. And do you know that I just realized that scoring this way, like with little short strokes, is so much more effective because you don't run off the edge as much. I don't know. I've been scoring for a while and never figured that out. All right, this one's a little shorter. This is four and a quarter. So I'm still going to do a half inch. Oops. Okay. And fold these. And this will get glued to here. And we could round those corners. I think I will because it's going to be inside. Also looks like I could trim a little, and I will, but that you want to do after the fact. So let me do this. And we're going to take our medium. For now, I'm losing my voice. Kind of weird. 
Okay, so now we just want to glue this to the back of this. And that's done just with a little happy glue. Okay, so here's where you really do want to let the paper tell you where it wants to be in terms of the fold because you want to make sure it goes over everything. Now I'm going to trim from the top on this so I'm going to align it to the bottom. And it's quite possible that when you print you won't have any adjustment to make there, but mine is definitely taller at the top than it needs to be. And just this. And now, same with the other side. This one looks a little tall, like I didn't cut it quite perfectly. Oops. Okay, so here, we're going to stick this in here. And again, align it to the bottom. So yeah, so my base is a little high, which is fine and very fixable. I can't tell you why. Okay, so here we have two different, oh, look at that. Now, of course, this is just screaming for embellishment, but I really feel like the photos that you're going to put in yours and the journaling area is so, it, it's, the big, it's, it's the star of the show. So if you want to add things there, absolutely, but it is not necessary. So now, before we go further, I'm going to burnish this backside where I have glued, I'm going to trim the top to meet the doors, so to speak. So, I'm going to put this here, and just even them up a little. Okay, so now, easy part, just put on the cover. So, again, reiterating that I really do try to make it so you can be as happy as you want to be when you're creating your um, oh this one is thin I mean this one is narrow that I did print a narrow one let me go find I do have a, a better printout hold on all right so here's the wider printout that I had done um, okay so now we have to decide this is going to be the bottom and again you could have any bottom you want this is the bottom I want and we have to decide how far up we're going to have this come. So I feel like I would like my cover to be about there and really show a lot of the damask. And then have my bottom, we can just decide how, how tall do we want it to go. Well, we can always trim it. So this is what I'm doing. So now here, you want to do a double score because we want to give this flap and this flap enough room to go over all this stuff. So to do that is simple. We're going to decide where we want it, which is about there. We're just kind of eyeballing it here. And back to the scoreboard. Let's start with the top. So the top, it looks like we want about an inch. Yeah, so if we score an inch down, so this is six, we're gonna score at five. With the skinnier score. I'm gonna score here. And then we're gonna score one to the right, or one to the glue side. How's that? Because if you're scoring on the other side, we're going to score one over, and that's going to give us just a little gusset that we can, can you see that? It's going to give us just enough that we can go over all of our goodies and be happy. Okay, so now I'm just trying to, there we go. So by doing it that way, we have a little bit of a flap. Okay, 
So we're going to do the same thing to the bottom. So now we have to figure out where do we want the bottom to come up. How far? Now technically, since here's the top and the bottom, um, I, I'm leaving a lot of room and I'm going to probably bring that down a little. It doesn't need to be that much. So I'm going to bring it to there, which means I'm going to score as soon as I find a pencil. I need to just mark like about where it's going to be. So I can see. Okay, so there's my line, right? It's always the tricky part is finding the line on such busy, busy patterns. So I'm going to first trim that off because that will drive me crazy. And I should at least see how do I want this to come out. That was actually a good thing to check. So here's if all this were open, I would want this this way. So this is going to be the bottom. So I will change. I marked that side, which you now can't really see. I'm going to take another look at this and bring this down. There we go. I'm just going to pinch it so I have a sense of where I want to score. It's right about here. I'm going to do that with a little score. And again, it doesn't have to be exact. And then I'm going to go one side toward the glue, the glued flap. So no matter which way you're holding your scorer, you're going to go a score where you want it to fold over the front and then toward the glue area. Oh, just a little eighth of an inch over. So there's one. And then we're going to get that other, that other score to do its thing, which right now it does not want to, but it's there. There we go. Sometimes when you're going across grain like this, you really do have to ask nicely. There we go. I know you can't see any of that, sorry. Okay, so then we want both of them. A nice little gusset there. Let me move this for a second. So we're gonna do it this way. It's just easier to do on the table. And up in the air. Okay, so now we could cut some of this trim off, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to glue it on because I don't know. I always feel like the more things stick, the better. And I don't maybe trust everything to stick together as it should. So here is how this is going to be, and here's how this is going to be. And it's really cute, and I'm loving it. And the only thing is, I think I want to put a little thumb hole here. You know, like a, a yaddy yaddy. But I think I want to use the thing that comes with that envelope maker thing. So hold on, let me grab it. This is the thing I was talking about, okay? So if you don't have that, that's, you don't need to do this at all. But I would, otherwise I would have used the thumb hole with the, circle cutter but I really like the little shape this makes so I'm going to try and get this so it's kind of centered somewhere near there. Does that look like the center? See there's no measurement that way for me. Oh there we go L and L. Look at that it's like magic. We're gonna go with that and it's just gonna make this little divot and that's gonna just be cute. And we like cute. Actually, we've talked about this. I never do cute. I do grungy. Although I have this other cute thing that's on the way. Um, I have so much to share with you guys. Oh, I'm gonna round those corners too, simply because I can. Let's go with medium. I just give it a little bit of a different look there. There goes the glue stick. a little inking here okay so now 
we are going to glue this to this, to the back. And like I said, I'm just going to leave the whole thing. I'm going to leave the whole flap. And that should make it good and sturdy. Everybody is mowing their lawns. I don't know if you can even hear that. We haven't been mowing. We're trying to rewild a piece of property that had been a mown field. I mean, mown to like nothing um, for a long time. And we're trying to rewild it into a bird and bee and butterfly habitat, which means not mowing it very much. And luckily, we live in a place where nobody really cares. <laughs> you know, it's all kind of do what you want to do and just be good people. But I'm sure other people driving by look at our, our house and think, look at all those dandelions. But, you know, you just got to not care. We know what we're doing. All right, people, there we go. Now I have to glue this on. Oh, this is screaming for something, but that's tomorrow's worry. Right now, I'm just getting this together as a, here's how you put it together. How you embellish it is entirely up to you. And we're all going to do things differently. And I love seeing what you all do because it's so different often from what I would do. So you can see how the having that little bit of a gusset just helps it to, to sit better. Otherwise, it was it would bow a little bit. So let's oh, do not use the scoring thing as a bone folder. Okay, here we go. So now, again, there might be more embellishments. I might have added several things to the kit in terms of tags and labels and things. I don't know. This is just getting this piece together. And you open it up. And you've got these gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous photos that you can flip through. This one is a little stuck. Let's see if we can't coax that one back a little bit. I don't know why. Oh, I must have encroached a little. See, that's why you want to be a little careful. There we go. That's good. Um, you want to be a little careful that you don't encroach on the hinge of the, the photo below it. Okay. There we have it. I'm happy. I am really happy. I love this. So this is going to get put down into a journal and be a lovely secret place for lots of um, photos. And again, I mean, this could change. Here's a little place for an index and a place for journaling. And um, you feel free to embellish any way you want. Oh no, I didn't realize I did not print. I did print the other side of that. Dang. Anyway, that should be printed with this. Oh, well, anyway, you get the idea. You know, I print out so many different versions of these that this happens sometimes. This should look like this, so that when you open it, you have the wow factor of all this beautiful damask print. Um, so, yours will. And it doesn't change how you construct it, so I'm not going to remake the video, even though I'm dying to. Um, but there you go. That's how you, how you put this kit together. So, I've chattered on long enough. Go create, be awesome.